official interview, they talk to Barclays uh, managing director so that we can get to understand what is happening because of that. You know, something which was new and a lot of you, the customers and viewers and that we want to know and hear from them what is happening from the name which everyone knew as Barclays Bank to Absalom and we'll be able to you know, give you more of what is happening and if there are any changes that may affect you, the viewers, this is the right time that you have to get that. But for now, we'll get the interview start, we have to get this one so that we go straight into it and give us what is happening. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. We can just uh, go straight into it and I uh, want to find out you know, how you interpret the theme of uh, you know, this year's show because now we are at the agriculture and commercial. And we want to start from that so that we can get, you know, understand it from there as well as you know what is happening in terms of our Okay. I think. I mean, the, the, the theme for this year is, uh, uh, you know, sustainable economic empowerment. And for us, this is a very exciting thing because it's very, it speaks to who we are, uh, you know, as a bank. Uh, you know, for the last 100 years, which is what we have been in Zambia, and we talk about the name change a little later, uh, we have really been focusing on the various sectors. And uh, so far, we have invested $4 billion in refinancing various sectors. And those include the mining sector, the agriculture sector, the energy sector, the SME, as well as the retail clients. So really for us is how do we economically empower these clients? I mean the corporates, I always say the corporates are given because you know they are there really providing the large services to the economy. However, our focus has also been the SMEs. How do we bring the SMEs and really play with the value chain in supporting the SMEs? You know, in supporting the economy. And what do I mean by that? If you look at the SMEs, and mainly they are importers, one of the things that is really fundamental to them is how do they make payments in a seamless and efficient manner. So what we are doing to the SMEs is that we've got a new platform now, which is called the, the Barclays Integrator for SMEs. And with that, they are able to do the straight through payments, they are able to do the foreign exchange uh, you know, transactions. And I'm happy because as a country, we've had a very stable currency for the last 12 months. And this is really very good for them because they know exactly how much they're going to pay and they do it straight through. Uh, so that means you know, they're really bridging the gap between them and the mines, them and their suppliers, uh, you know, them and the, you know, their, their clients who are in the mines. Uh, maybe let me also talk a little bit about agriculture. You know, we have been involved with the visit program. You know, last year we, we distributed about 80,000 cards and, uh, you know, nearly 90,000 cards. And really this year we're looking to do a lot more, maybe even double that. We distributed cards right across the country. And for us it's about empowering the clients. When you do that, you're empowering the farmers. Because you're saying, how do we give you the cards before the farming season even starts? And that's what we're looking to do this year. It's really to say, let's quickly empower our clients before the agriculture really starts. So we're working with the government, we're working with the farmers themselves to say, deposit your bit of the money quickly because that's how FISIC works. And the government gives you the balance. But we as a bank are there to facilitate and give you the card for you to be able to buy your fertilizer you know, on a point of sale platform, which Hatton will talk about you know, shortly. So that's really how we're interpreting the theme. It's about how do we bring the client's possibilities to life. Whether we're talking about the farmers, whether we're talking about the SMEs, or indeed whether we're talking about the corporate clients. Yeah. which are beyond FISIP, uh, you know, in terms of, because FISIP is just one part of a number of farmers that are involved in that, and those are very important farmers. But there's also another part where we are providing financing to the farmers, whether it's pre-financing, uh, whether we're also providing, a number of farmers would be looking for, for a number of assets that allow them to do, uh, you know, their business effectively, you know, like vehicles, for example, or tractors. Uh, so we have what we're calling, you know, the asset back financing uh, with facilities, which we work with them to say we'll provide you these, 
uh, you know, this financing for you to get your equipment, for you to be able to do the farming, you know, before the season starts. So that's something that we have continually been working with. And but for us, it's about how do we provide them the solutions that they need. It's not we don't just bundle them up and say, oh, the farmers need this. But it's just about what does each farmer need. And for us as Barclays, that's what we specialize in, in really providing those solutions. Thank you so much. So for our stand for this year, we have changed the way that we are customers. As we have become and we have become stronger on being a digital maker. One of the things that you see as a change as you walk into our stand, and we are continue to our stand, is that you will notice we have got our intelligent team, not on show, but working to give customers support. So in the past we used to see cashiers, this time we will meet our intelligent ATMs. This intelligent ATM allows you to make the payment, but also to deposit. So you can actually make your deposit once you are in the shop. Like you can do along with one of the widest uh, spread of intelligent ATMs in the country. The other thing you will notice is that we now have we have got a digital booth within the show, which used to be our branch. In the digital booth, we have provided a capability where you actually can make a payment straight through. In the show, without having to fill in a form, without having to do any paper, we also boast, as you are aware, that we've got more than 3,200 people standing as a company. Here at the show, we've got a team which is ready to help people to actually have access to our post team. So everything is digital led. We're all ready to work. You see, I think it's important when we say we are a digital led and we are providing these digital platforms that our clients realize that in the country realize that we are also involved in a big part in our ready to work. So it has been showcased here. What do we do in terms of financial literacy? What are we doing in terms of IKIK within the community? So there's a lot of activity happening in our space. Digital related, the digital capability we invite you to us. Madam, I'm getting back to you. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm going to go back at least to some of the but I need to understand this. If I go to some of the this, what they call apps and email and yeah. and uh, maybe before we go to that, let's get to understand the nature of the partners to, uh, to apps. Okay. Maybe they will give us more information about what, is, what it is now and what is going on. Okay. Just speaking to our viewers, if you look at the last um, 100 years, Barclays has been in Zambia for 100 years now. And um, uh, they were nearly 100% shareholders at some point in the But because of regulatory reasons, uh, Barclays reduces shareholdings now to 14.5%, 14.9%. So technically, Barclays is a minority shareholder. As Barclays is a minority shareholder, we cannot continue to use the name the minority shareholders. What we did is that we did our homework. We spoke to a number of thousands of people on the continent, including you, the media, including the clients, including the regulators, and our own staff and the community at large to just say, what name do you think we should be called after Barclays? And uh, the major shareholder of Barclays is actually in APSA. So APSA, uh, you know, Group Limited, uh, you know, has been, it's one of the biggest bank on the continent, got over a one trillion uh, you know, rand balance sheet. So it's been in existence for a number of years now, and they are our shareholders. But for us, it was, would this name be suitable uh, for, for us to use to replace value? And we, get a res we got a resounding yes, just because, you know, this name is associated with a number of sponsorships, as you say, you know, we sponsor the Premier League, we see, you know, South Africa, and there's just a number of sponsorships on the continent. So it's already a known name, and they are our shareholders. So what we have done is to move from uh, being Barclays by 2020, we've got up to 2020 to do that. So you will continue to see the name Barclays, uh, you know, in Zambia. However, at some point, you will see us introducing you know, the brand as you can see behind because we are part of the APSA family. We have to talk about that, we're very proud of that. Uh, but at some point, we will then change the name from Barclays completely to APSA. It's a journey we are walking. We are very proud of that journey. And it's really about how do we bring our clients' possibilities to life as we walk through this journey. So that's an exciting journey now. Uh, 
no, so from a client perspective, because Mzinga is high, there's no change to them. If there is a change that they are going, it's our efforts we are working to improve customer service. It's the introduction of new services. It's the additional investments we are now doing in more digital platforms. Mzinga mentioned earlier on about BIB, which is our business solution, business interface. You are going to see as we are in the, she mentioned about fishing, all the investments we are doing in the integration of what we are doing within our, our digital platform. So a client, we expect clients to actually enjoy more things as we go, but to them today, there's nothing that they would expect to change. Yeah, but it's important to note that we are a digitally led bank. And one of our key pillars and key priorities for us is how do we become a digitally led bank? As Atul explained earlier, when you look at our, our stand that they show, we don't have branches. That doesn't mean we're getting rid of our branches, but we're just working with the times. And working with the times means the government has introduced an, an e-agenda, e meaning everything that they're doing, if you look at uh, the pension fund, NAPSA, it's really gone electronic. If you look at ZRA, it's gone electronic. And that's what the government is saying, is that let's achieve efficiencies through the digital agenda. We are responding to that environment by really making sure that everything that we're doing for us is very much digitally led. I will see the change in terms of uh, things that they have been sponsored, the main sponsors of the partners. Is it going to be called action? Look, that's, we, are, we are working through the details of that and uh, we will be able to give you announce, an announcement of what will be known as this year um, in the next, uh, probably in the next two weeks. So we're just finalizing the details. As we know, there's a lot of uh, you know, stakeholders to get involved with and that's what we're working through. And as soon as we're ready, we'll let you know. Yeah. Anything else that you want to your customers to know as well as other ways? Look, I mean, I think it's important for our customers to know that um, we are a digitally-led bank and uh, for all the customers who don't have Star 229 hash, I would like them to come onto our stand. We will onboard you very quickly. You can open our account almost immediately. And uh, you know, being a digital led bank means doing banking from the comfort of your house. You don't have to come into the branch. You are welcome to come into the branch, but you can do banking from the comfort of your home. And that's what we want to be known for. You can pay your bills and do all that from the comfort of your home. I think for me it's just to say thank you. It is important for us. We are traveling a journey and our customers have been part of this journey. They continue being part of this journey. It is really important for us to just say thank you. Okay, we have to end it here. We'll go to the directors. But it's just a quick understanding of what is happening and how far they have gone in terms of all these changes which have been happening. So it's up to you to get the message and see how the best team are doing in terms of improving yourself. This has been meeting. Until next time, bye bye.